uh, in textbooks. And in 2003, there was a 2003 and 4 when high school biology texts were being considered for adoption. There was a huge fight, and the fight considered um, whether uh, the biology textbook publishers would be required to include the weaknesses of evolution in their books, whether they would have to take these books back and rewrite them to include the weaknesses of evolution. Now, if you remember earlier in my talk, we scientists don't have a list of the weaknesses of evolution, right? So what we're talking about is a lot of really bad science at best and closet creationism uh, in all probability. I really like that. <laughs> now, the good news is that uh, even though creationist members of the board fought very, very hard, cooler heads prevailed, and the textbook publishers were not made to include the weaknesses of evolution. Now, here comes 2008 and 2009, and the teaks are going to be revised. Mindful of the attack on evolution, the committees changed the wording to try to get rid of the strengths and weaknesses language. Now remember, this is a whole bunch of committees. This is physics and chemistry and biology and earth and space science, a new uh, study, uh, environmental science, marine biology. There's all these committees. Every single one of them agreed on new wording for 3A. Here's what it was. Analyze and evaluate scientific explanations using empirical evidence, logical reasoning, and experimental and observational testing. Well, yeah, that's what we do, right? Thank you. That's really a critical thinking standard. Strengths and weaknesses doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. This is really what scientists do. It didn't quite last that way. Um, Dr. McElroy, who is the chairman of the Board of Education in Texas, and a young earth creationist, um, and a major, uh, he's been on the board forever. Uh, he also led the fight in 2003 to try to get the biology textbooks rewritten. Mr. McElroy and his um, colleagues tried to amend the stuffings out of 3A. Uh, they couldn't just throw out the, uh, the, word, the new wording. Well. Of course not. Every single committee was out of that. Every single committee had the exact same wording. If he had thrown out 3A across the board, he would have run into some real political problems. So he amended the bejesus out of it, basically. Supportive or not supportive? Sufficiency or insufficiency? Arguments for or against? What is not fully understood? A whole thesaurus of alternatives for strengths and weaknesses. Um, it did not help that the new scientist published an article on horizontal gene transfer with the very splashy cover, Darwin was wrong, chopping down the tree of life. I was quite startled to be sitting there in the board meeting and hearing one of the creationist school board members say, here's this new article from the not creationist publication, New Scientist, this is mainstream science, and it is. Uh, an article talking about how evolution is a theory in crisis. Why can't we teach the students the weaknesses of evolution like this? <laughs> what do you do? Uh, don't get me started on the new scientist. Okay, so what happened? After several contentious meetings, the board finally came up with what we call son of strengths and weaknesses. Um, which is, oh, and, and by the way, excuse me, um, I propose that you can you can predict the amount of political pressure involved in one of these statements based upon the number of prepositional phrases and conjunctions. All right? <laughs> in all fields of science, analyze, evaluate, and critique scientific explanations by using empirical evidence, logical reasoning, and experimental and observational testing. Stop there. <laughs> Just stop. That's a good point. No. Including <laughs> examining all sides of scientific evidence of those scientific explanations so as to encourage critical thinking by the student. Count the prepositional phrases, like I say. Okay, now, we predict that a couple years from now, when high school biology textbooks come up for revision, all sides of scientific evidence will be used much as strengths and weaknesses was uh, back in 2003 to try to pressure the textbook publishers into putting a lot of crap into the books. We'll see what happens. 
The other thing I want to tell you about, which is related, is what are referred to as academic freedom laws, which are cropping up all over the country. If you go to ncsc.com, or our old domain, ncseweb.org, we really still are a .org, but we finally got the uh, we finally got ncse.com as a domain name, yes. Anyway, cyber squatters, terrible people. Um, academic freedom legislation is cropping up all over the place. Now, I have a hypothesis that one cause of these, this kind of legislation, which I'll describe in a moment, has to do with a number of cases in the 1900s, uh, excuse me, 1990s and 2000s involving teachers. Top-down approaches, where you have an equal time for creation science laws, which were very popular in the late 70s, or um, district-wide laws like uh, Dover, Pennsylvania's, which require teachers to do something, haven't worked for them very well. If you can get individual teachers to bring this stuff into the classroom, you might have a better shot at it. However, there were these three cases back in the 1990s and 2000s where individual teachers did exactly freelance in quite the this, this same fashion, and they were smacked down for it by the courts. Courts deciding that you can't just freelance the teaching of whatever it is you want to teach. A case that is not as well known as it should be is a Minnesota state court case, Rodney LeVake versus um, Independent School District in Faribault, Minnesota. In his complaint, Levesque holds the view that the teaching of evolution in high school should be accompanied by a critical examination of the scientific arguments and evidence both for and against the theory. Now, when this was taken to court, the Minnesota um, uh, uh, State Court ruled against him. Plaintiff asserts a free speech right to teach the criticisms of evolution in the biology classroom. Plaintiff's position is wrong. That's a useful thing to know. Here's why. The court also wrote that academic freedom is not a license for uncontrolled expression at variance with established curricular content. Plaintiff's classroom at the high school is a non-public forum, and the district has the right to limit the speech in that classroom to the teaching of the designated curriculum. In other words, if you sign the contract in the district, you have agreed to teach that district's curriculum. A K-12 teacher has virtually no academic freedom. Okay. So, what if a district is prevented from stopping a teacher from teaching alternative theories or evidence against evolution? Or what if a district tells a teacher that he can teach the evidence against evolution, not that you have to teach the evidence against evolution? I think this is part of the rationale for these academic freedom acts that we have been encountering lately. Let me tell you a little bit more about the, the nitty-gritty of these guys. The Academic Freedom Act movement started in Alabama uh, with a law in, 19, in 2004 which was intended to encourage the teaching of creationism uh, without using the term. The sponsor of this bill said, quote, this bill will level the playing field because it allows the teacher to bring forward the biblical creation story of humankind. Representative Jim Carnes was quoted as saying, quote, evolution is one theory, creation is an alternative theory. Now, the bills got out of committee, but they didn't get through the House before the legislature adjourned. But the um, legislators in Alabama are nothing if not determined, and uh, in subsequent years there have been uh, more bills uh, proposed. In this original bill and most of its successors, the claim was made that teachers need the protection of their academic freedom. Teachers need protection to teach alternative theories of origins. The purpose of this, I believe, was to prevent a district from doing as the district in Levesque and Webster and Pelosa did and tell the teacher not to teach the alternative theories. This is basically a get-out-of-jail-free card for a creationist teacher. That's really what, what we're talking about. The other thing was this bill was... was um, was permissive in the sense that it didn't require a teacher to teach alternative theories. It just said that you can teach alternative theories if you wanted. The other thing that this bill did was it would protect students if the student um, subscribes to a position on origins. But this is very scary for teachers. I mean, you can kind of imagine, as the caption says here, maybe it's not a wrong answer, maybe it's just a different answer. Uh, teachers basically don't want 
teachers don't want laws and regulations that allow the students to say, well, I'm protected. I can write anything I want in this test, or I can write your answer, but then I can go on and on and on about creationism, et cetera, et cetera.